Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, how to use bus force. This is video four and today we're talking about the compressor. So let's go to a new preset here and then let's see if we have some signal. Okay, so we have signal. So let's go ahead and mute the sad path because that's what we're listening to right now. And let's unmute the comp path. And if we play it, we're not gonna hear any sound. That's because this knob here is all the way down. So go ahead and double click that to zero and we should have our signal back. So for this demonstration, let's mute the equalizer and the filter as well. So we're just only dealing with compression here. So as we look in our graph, our signal comes in and it goes to the compressor and then it goes to the comp path. And then that's what we're gonna be listening to because that's the only one that we're listening to. The dry path and the sad path are both muted. So down over here in the compressor, we have attack, release, force, which is basically ratio with a little extra stuff to it, which we're going to get into in just a moment. Then we have our threshold and our makeup gain over here. So attack is basically how long it takes the compressor to start compressing after the signal has passed the threshold that we set. And the release can be seen as the opposite where it releases the compression. And they're all measured in time. So by default, this is going to come at 75.5 milliseconds and the release is going to be 30 milliseconds. So what's very interesting to note is this graph right up here. So if you're unfamiliar with this type of graph, as we play our track here, we can see this bouncing little ball right here, and that's basically telling us the level of our track. So as we drag this threshold down, we can see that this curve is starting to go down because if this line is very at the left in the corner and then at the top in the corner here on the top right, there's going to be no compression happening if it's a diagonal line like that. So if, if the force is all the way down and the, and the threshold is all the way up, it's a diagonal line indicating no compression. So as we raise our ratio, let's say some to like three or four or something like that, we can start to see this curve a little bit and we drag down our threshold. And this is where we're going to start getting compression once this little bouncing ball is starting to cross over and getting turned down because if it kept falling on this trajectory, it would not be compressed. So as it's following this purple line right here, that's when the compression is actually happening. And what's also interesting to note with this curve here, a lot of compressors have hard knees, right? So this line is going to go up and there's going to be a sharp point right here. And then it's just going to go a flat line. And that's a very sharp compression curve, which is known as hard knee. This has a very soft knee. It's very rounded and has kind of its own little shape here. And building upon that, why this is called force, once we get up to about five, then becomes a limiter. And you're going to start to notice the curves kind of deviate a little bit up here. As we go further and further, it starts to sink down, which is very, very interesting because what happens is once our signal passes our threshold right over here, instead of just attenuating the volume, it's literally going to put it below where it originally was. So you're going to be getting negative compression. So if you do something like this really crazy, your compression, the loudest parts of your track are really going to end up being the quietest parts of your track and the quietest parts of your track are going to be what's more present. So something kind of interesting to wrap your head around. Definitely you should know that this is in here. And that's a very strange curve once we put the force all the way to 10 and then play around with the threshold here. So it sounds pretty wild. So the snare hits are going to be barely almost heard, but everything else is kind of coming up there. And since we're losing a lot of volume, that's why our makeup gain is over here to restore that. And then our gain, or our gain reduction meters are kind of going a little crazy over here. So you have very creative use of compression there. So let's go ahead and restore that. So basically this knob here is our next thing that we should tackle here. So we have stereo and dual. So really the differences of here, if we're on stereo, which you should mostly be for most cases, it's going to take the left channel and the right channel and give an average reading of those to drive the compressor. If you have dual selected, it's going to look at the left channel and the right channel as independent sources and then compress those accordingly. So if there's a big shift, like your left side is much higher than your right side, you might get some weird compression or some weird unbalanced stuff. So something to keep in mind to know what both of these do. So for most situations, stereo is going to be the one that you want to stay in. And like we saw here, our makeup gain, as we increase this here, it's going to increase the gain that we lose from compression. Because a lot of people might think that if we compress something, it's going to make it louder, but it actually turns it down. And then we have to restore that lost volume with makeup gain. Sometimes it has an auto gain, but for here you have a knob with 30 dB of pull, which is quite significant. 
So something like this, I would use maybe kind of more of a gentle, gentle compression, maybe two or three, kind of really depends on what you want. If you really want to get those peaks down pretty fast, you're going to want to have more so of a faster attack, faster release, and really dial in your threshold according to how loud your track is. If you want something more RMS value, you might want to go a little bit longer attack, longer release, something like that. But definitely experiment with your track and the compressor and see what sounds right to you. So the next thing that we should tackle here is this side chain here. So what you can do with a lot of compressors, so once we're sending our signal into this compressor, it's taking our signal and driving the compressor for that. However, in here, we can always select from internal to external, so we can have a different source that's going to be driving our compression, right? So let's say you have a track and you want your kick drum, every time a kick drum hits, you want this bus or whatever this group is on to also be compressed a little bit as a kick goes, kind of some pumping a little bit, something like that, right? So it's different in every single DAW, but if you're using FL, this is the way you'd want to go about that. So I've prepared a kick drum here in pigments. So if I go ahead and unmute this over here and mute our main track, we just have a kick, right? So let's say we want this kick drum here to drive the compressor that's on this track. So the way we do that in, uh, in FL Studio, we would right or we'd select our channel here. We'd right click this up arrow. And here we have a choice. We can side chain to this track, which we want to do. We want to do side chain or if we want to side chain, side chain to this track only. Basically, do we want to hear this kick and have it side chained, or do we just want to have it side chain something and not hear it at all? So for this demonstration, let's go to side chain to this track only because we don't necessarily want to hear it. So what's happening here is this pigments is getting now sent to this channel here. So we go in our plugin here, we have that set up and we have external. And if we play something, we can still see that this knob here is still reading our compression from our main track, right? From our from our stereo track. But we want the kick to drive that. So in FL, we got to go up to this gear here, select this over here, go to the next plug gear, I think it is, and then go to processing. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to see stereo in and then two on sidechain. So right click two, and then we're going to select pigments because this is what we sent to sidechain. And now this is selected. So once we go back to our plugin here and we hit play, we can see that that kick drum gets triggered every time that ball moves. So if we watch over here and kind of zoom in in this section here, once this kick drum gets triggered, then we can see that this compression ball here is going to get triggered as well. So we see that it's working and what's nice in bus force is we can always monitor that as well. So we have it selected on external and then there's this little headphone icon. So if we select this and now play, we just are going to hear our kick. So this is going to be the signal that's telling our compressor what to do. So basically the side chain. And building upon something like this here as well, we have the side chain frequency and then we have some gain. So let's say, for example, you have a certain, a different sound. Maybe it's not a kick drum, maybe it's a bass, or maybe it's some type of percussive elements that you're using to drive your compressor. And you want to hone in a little bit on the frequencies of that track to help the compressor drive a little bit better. So in this situation, that's where you don't want to use something like that. So the switch over here, if we go all the way to the left, we have a high pass filter. In the center, it's going to be off if we don't want to use it at all. And on the right, we have presence. So let's go ahead and listen to this and let's go to the high pass filter. So we have our kick here and then we can go all the way up here like this. Now we're just listening to the attack. So now that little attacky signal is the only thing that the, that the compressor is going to hear that's going to drive the compressor. So let's say you have a, a full stereo track and you just want the kick drum of that to trigger. Maybe you can use something like a presence here and kind of hone in on the kick drum, something maybe in the 50s or 60s and then kind of increase that volume here. So you're kind of honing in on a certain frequency spot to drive the compressor. So that's definitely there if you need it. Like I said, we have a high pass, we have off if you don't need it. If it's just a kick drum, then you probably don't need something like this. And then the presence. So that's basically how that sidechain works. And again, there might be different ways to do it in different DAWs, but this is the way that you would want to do something like this in FL Studio. So yeah, hopefully you learned something that was the compressor. Definitely spend some time with it because it's really cool. And there's also some really cool tricks in the manual as well for setting up certain different ratios and stuff like that to get some certain cool effects. So highly recommend you check that out as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.